The purpose of budgeting and tracking your expenses is to stick to your plan to achieve different goals. Let's say you've been tracking your expenses for several months now and realize that there's a huge chunk of money that goes towards groceries. If you want to find out why this might be such a high expense, besides inflation, then it's time to use this groceries tracker. The formulas capture your grocery transactions and automatically produce dynamic charts and insights. For example, you'll get to find out if you've been spending too much on overpriced ice cream. You could also interact with this advanced slicer to compare similar purchases and analyze their proportions. As we scroll down, your data is summarized in this table by categories per month as well as a yearly total and average. There's an option to specify which store you went to and which user purchased the groceries if you share the bill with another person. Conversely, you could also change the user to an account if you buy groceries with multiple accounts. This information is then broken down to understand the distribution of payments in the stores. Keen to enter transactions or analyze your data on the road? There's a mobile tab included where you can see the exact same insights in a smartphone layout. If you would like to skip the tutorial and access this ready to use tracker in light, dark, cyberpunk and matrix theme, make sure to visit my Patreon, which is linked in the description of this video. Now let's learn how to build this groceries tracker from the beginning. Okay, so step number one, go to Google Sheets and start a new spreadsheet. So we're gonna start working on the transactions tab and we're gonna enter the following column titles. Okay, so for date, what you wanna do is select from row three all the way to the bottom. So you select with control shift or command shift and then the down arrow. And then we go to data, data validation, and select date. So now whenever you click a cell, it shows your calendar and you can choose the date. As you can see, it's currently in this format. So what we're gonna do is select everything again, and I'm gonna change the format to this one here. So it shows the date like this, but easier to read. For the amount, you can just select the currency that you want. So whenever you're gonna enter a number, it'll show the currency. For the description, we're gonna leave it as it is. Now for category, what you wanna do is select everything again, go to data, data validation, list of items, and here's where we're gonna enter all the categories that we want for the grocery transactions. So I'm just gonna enter the list that most people will have, but you can add other categories that fit your situation. So once you've done that, you'll see this little drop down symbol. And then whenever you click that, you get all the categories that you entered. So you can click any that you want and it'll show up in the cell. We're gonna do the same for the store. So select everything, go to data, data validation. And here we're gonna enter the stores that we usually go to. So because I'm doing this for everyone, I'm just gonna enter store one, store two, and store three. And then for the user, again, we go to data, data validation, list of items, and here you can enter your name or even a credit card or account that you're using, up to you. I'm just gonna enter user one and user two. In columns G, H, and I is where we're gonna enter a few formulas, but before I do that, I'm just gonna enter a few dummy transactions here so that we can see how the formulas work. So for month, we're gonna enter this formula that basically grabs the date from A3 and then changes it to a text that says the month and the year with a dash. So you can just copy that, go all the way to the bottom and drag it down. This formula does the same, but we're changing the format to year. And finally, I created a column called all because this is optional if you wanna maybe edit your tracker in the future and add a filter for all the years because this current tracker that we're going to work on currently just looks at the data per year. But if by any chance you wanna look at the totals for, I don't know, the last five years, you could just select the all filter and it'll show all the years. By the way, these formulas that I entered here and then all the other formulas that I'm going to be using in this tutorial will be available in the description of this video. So you can easily copy them and paste them in the exact same cells where I'm entering them and that will help you save some time. So now that we have the transactions tab ready, we can add a new tab and call it the dashboard. So we want to go to cell B22 and enter a year. And here, what we're going to do is go to data, data validation, and then we're going to select the range. So we're going to go back to transactions and select from H3 all the way to the bottom. You just remove those numbers. So H3 to H, click OK. And that way, this drop down will show you the years that you have entered in the transactions. Currently, we only have data for 2021, but the more data you enter from previous years or future years, then you'll see the drop down here changing. It shows an error. So to fix that, you just go here and change it to plain text because the format in transactions is actually a plain text. Now you want to go to cell B24 and enter category. And what you're going to do is enter all the categories that you previously entered in the data validation for transactions down here, one by one. So here I enter them all and then the final one is just the total. 
And what we're going to do in cell C24 is enter this formula. So equals select cell C22, which is the year. And then you want to enter the and the symbol and in quotations, you enter total. So that way it says 2021 total. And then when you have other years, whenever you change this, it will show that specific title. So say you have 2022, this will change to 2022 total. In cell F24, we're going to enter the following formula. This formula combines transpose, unique and query functions to get the list of months that we have entered based on this year. So as you can see, it's showing October, November and December. And those are the months that I have currently entered data for. So October, November and December. As you can see, I'm using this statement that's telling the query to select the months, but only the months that contain this year here. This data will change based on the dropdown that you enter. So we're going to start off by populating the data from column F, row 25. So we're going to enter this formula and it's just a combination of sum ifs. So we're adding up data specifically for this category that matches this current month. As you can see, we have zero for the alcohol category in October. But then what you have to do is simply drag this all the way to Q and then drag it down all the way to row 48. And there you go. We can see the data has been filled up. You can just change it to dollar sign or whichever currency you're using, center it. And that's how the table is populated automatically. I'll just give you a quick example. Let's say I enter a new transaction the 31st of December, let's say someone really wanted to party hard and spend $2,000 in wine and cheese at the supermarket. I'll categorize it as alcohol. And if we go to the dashboard, you can see that December now has $2,025 in alcohol. Yeah, so the data is captured instantly as soon as you enter a transaction. To get the total, I'm using quite a similar formula to the one I used for the, each of the months, but I just removed one of the filters. So now it's just looking at the total year and not the specific month. To get the percentage of the total, all we do is grab the total for each category and divide it by the total amount. And as you can see, that's the percentage. So currently 3.8% of our expenses have been towards alcohol. Hopefully people can reduce this specific category or at least keep it well balanced. And now all we're missing is just the total per month. So that's a simple sum formula. Just adding up all the categories. And then you can just simply drag it to the right. I actually don't want to see these zeros here. So what I'm going to do is enter an additional feature to this formula, which is that if is blank. So if cell F24 is blank, then make it blank. If not, then add up all the numbers. So as you can see now, these zeros here will disappear because these cells are currently blank. Okay, and that is the totals table per year and month. The next thing is the breakdown tables. So we're gonna go to cell B51 and then enter this formula. So first we're gonna start with the user list. So just enter the users that you initially entered in the data validation for transactions. So it was user one and user two in my case. Next is the stores. So we're going to enter this formula that is quite similar to the top table, but instead of the category, we're now selecting the user and it gives us the amount that this specific user spent on this specific month. So as you can see, we link this formula to this month and you can just drag it all the way 12 months. Now we do the same for the stores. Now we enter the formula for the total amount, the percentage of the total expense, and the average per user. Finally, for the last table, basically we want to combine these two to understand the breakdown per user and store. And then we use a SUMIS formula again, basically scans through the transactions with specific filters. So here we're looking for store one expenses by user one in 2021. So now we get a nice breakdown of how much each person spent in each store. So now we want to go to cell K3 and what we're going to do is enter this formula. So we want the top three categories and to get those, we're going to use the magical query function. So basically we're selecting our table here, both category and total. And we want to select column B and C where column B is not empty and you want to order column C by descending limit three. So we want the top three expenses from this data. So now we do something similar in cell K8. 
Finally, the last bit of information that we want in cell K13 is the average spent per day. And this one's just a simple calculation where we get the total average that we spent and we divide it by 30.437. 30.437 is the average number of days per month. And that's the skeleton of this dashboard. I'm going to quickly format the dashboard and the transactions by adding some borders and colors to the tables. Okay, so here we've got the formatted results. I just simply added some background color to the tables, some borders, uh, same with transactions. Okay, so let's start with the first chart. What we want to do is select category and total all the way to row 48. Go to insert, chart, and we want to select a pie chart. So it gives us the total numbers and the categories. So now we're going to select the category again from B24 all the way to B48. And then while holding command or control, select the average. And what we want is a stacked bar chart. Now for the third chart, what we're going to do is select the months. And then while holding command or control, select the totals. And we want to combine the ranges vertically. Finally, for the last chart, we're going to scroll down and select the last table. So there it is. That is the groceries tracker dashboard. All we're missing now is the mobile tab. So I'll quickly show you how to do that. So enter a new tab, call it mobile. We want to go to column S and remove all the ones after. And then we want to scroll down to row 111 and remove all the ones after. And in row four, what we're going to do is go to dashboard, copy the year, and then paste it in cell B4. So we still get the same drop down of years. The data validation is already there, so you don't have to edit it again. And before we enter the formula here to get the top categories, we first need to add the table at the bottom. So that's what we're going to work on. So now we enter the formula to get the months. And it's the exact same one that we used in dashboard, but now we're linking it to B4, which is the new year. And we do the same for the previous breakdown tables at the bottom. What we're going to do is just copy all these tables and paste them here. And now all we must do is change the cells. Now that we have the tables at the bottom filled up, then we can continue with the top categories. So now we've got the skeleton for the mobile tab. Uh, just like with the dashboard, I'm going to quickly format this uh, with borders and colors. And I'll be back so we can quickly finish up the charts. Okay, so now that we have everything formatted, basically tables with colors and borders, we can quickly do the charts. So the best way to do this is to copy them directly from the dashboard. So just press Ctrl or Command C and then go to mobile and paste it here. And what we want to do is change the data range. So currently we had a dashboard. Now what we want is mobile category and totals. Click OK. The chart shouldn't change at all, but now it is linked to this data in mobile. So in the future, whenever you change this year in your smartphone, then you'll see this chart changing, not the one from dashboard. So what you want to do is go to your smartphone and open up the Google Sheets app. You'll see all the list of trackers that you might have. You want to open up the most recent one, which is the one we're working on. And you want to go to the mobile tab. So this is the view that we currently have. I'm going to make it light theme. And now basically what we want to do is move all the columns and make them narrow so that it fits our view in the mobile. But before we do that, I want to fix some rows and columns because we have a big table here. And what I want to see is the titles. But whenever I scroll to the right, I don't see the titles anymore. So we're going to freeze some columns and rows. So in the computer, you want to click cell B4, go to view, freeze, and freeze up to row four, as well as up to column B. So now we have these columns and rows fixed. So whenever you scroll, they will still be there. So if you scroll down to a table, you can see how now I can scroll through the table and see which category they belong to without losing the title. Now you can proceed to move the columns to the best view that you want that fits your mobile. So see the condiments, the S's at the bottom. So I'm going to make it a bit wider and it looks like they all fit now. Now you can also edit the size of the charts. I'm going to make them smaller so that they fit in my mobile window. 
So I'm going to make the charts fit that specific view. There you go, you can see how good they look in the mobile version. So as you can see, this is the mobile version and it's way better than the dashboard. So if I go to the dashboard, you can see it's a bit difficult to go through all the data and there's nothing fixed as well. But with a mobile version, it's a bit easier to read. Easier to just scroll through the data and look at each category in detail as well as the breakdown tables. For transactions, we didn't really change anything because it is pretty simple to enter data from either mobile or computer. But there it is, that's the mobile tab. Uh, one more thing that I would like to fix is that title there. So you can see groceries tracker, the T is between the fixed column. So what I'm going to do is just add a few more spaces between the letters. Now you can see the word tracker on the right side of that frozen column. So there it is, that is the groceries tracker. Transactions, mobile tab and the beautiful dashboard. I hope you find this useful and thanks to those who stayed throughout the tutorial to learn how to build it. This is Planet Finance. Thanks for joining me. Until next time, happy learning.